My cutting frame uses fly cutters and these need to be sharpened pretty regularly. This video is about how I make them and how I sharpen these cutters. In the cutting frame I've got right here you can see the fly cutter projecting out. It's this little piece right here. It's uh, got a point on it. I put a piece of white paper behind it just so you could see it and it would stand out a little bit more but let me rotate it around. I think it'll stand out pretty well for you. I use ultra hard C2 tungsten carbide rod that I get from McMaster Car for these. There's a link to it in the bottom of these notes. I cut it into pieces that are around one and a half inches long depending on what I want to do. The longer pieces allow for more of a sweeping curve when cutting. Cutting this very hard rod has to be done on a grinder. A saw won't work as it is too hard. I speak from experience. I use a 14 inch cut off grinder that I got from Lowe's or Harbor Freight or somewhere like that. And I buy, as I said, I buy the rod from McMaster Carr, but I get it in one foot lengths. So I can get about 10 or 11 of, the, of these pieces off a of rod. That makes plenty of fly cutters for a long time. After all the pieces are cut to length, I take them to the bench grinder. I put the pieces in a drill, and I use that to sharpen it to a point on the grinder. Using a drill makes for a very regular point, and the reason for that is critical, as it makes it much easier to find the center of the rod for the next steps. There is one piece that I forgot to mention as I was doing this. It's very important with carbide to not dunk it into water to cool it down. So you're going to have to manage the heat just by taking it away from the grindstone or by using a grinding stone that doesn't accumulate a lot of heat like this one doesn't. It's very critical to not dunk carbide into water because it'll crack it and create fractures that will just be problematic for you later. So now let's move on to the next step. For the next step, I need to make sure that the table on the grinder is set to 90 degrees to the face of the wheel. I have a mark on the side of mine over here that I use for aligning that and whatever method you have works just go ahead and use that. I put the piece into this holder that I made. It's a square block of steel that has been turned to have a hole in the end and turned back around the corners. For the 3 16 inch rod that I use I drill the hole with a number 12 bit. I, you'll see that a point is on the inside. That's because I want to ground flats on the side that it will be used to hold it. And this is going to be used for the set screws that hold the rod in this holder and later on the fly cutter, which also uses set screws. So I want to make sure after I get those flats done, I'm going to flip it around and align it with the set screws. So I'm going to grind it flat down now and then uh, probably not show you the whole piece just again because it's a long process and uh, I'll show you it at the end. Okay, it's about 20 minutes later, and I'm trying to get this in focus here. But you can see the flat spot there, and now uh, you can see how it came down to the point. The point's not at, uh, an actual point just yet, but that's okay. It will be in our next step. So let me get set up for that, and I'll show it to you. So what I need to do for this step is actually grind the angles that are this way and this way on this. Now, it's a compound angle, so I've got my platform here set at... 60 degrees and then I have a piece that I've made here out of wood that has a 120 degree angle here. So that combination is going to give me the angle that I want for cutting here. It's not easy to see when I actually do the cutting so I'm going to try my best but we'll see what we can do.
Okay, you can see the angle there. Okay, there you go. You can see the angle now. It's cut into the sides there. And then here's the flat, and you can see where it meets up with the flat. Now that angle's a little too sharp, and it won't hold an edge right now. So what we're going to do is put a micro bevel on there that will be at 75 degrees rather than 60. So that will give us a much more sustainable edge as well as a sharper edge. But I'm going to do that on the Tormek. Before I get started, I wanted to show you what I'm using here. These are the bottom side of the SVD 110 tool rest for the Tormek. But you'll notice on the left one, and I use two because it gives me a wider platform, but on the left one you'll notice that I've cut a part of it away. And I just used my bandsaw to do that. It worked fine. But the amount of it that I've cut away is just under one and a half inches. And that gives me the amount of space that I need to uh, be able to get it centered on the machine. I'll show you that in a second. This is shooting a little bit from the side so that I'll have room to work. But I can show you how I have two of the SVD 110 tool rest to give me one continuous surface here. And where that's useful, again, as I use this piece that I made, is that I now have space to slide it all the way across in front of the grindstone. So let me move it a little bit more, and then I'm going to show you how I grind this. Okay, let's put the uh, micro bevel on now. Now we need to uh, touch up the top. Okay, now I have the Japanese Waterstone on for the final honing on this. You can see there it's got a good mirror finish on it. One last piece. This point is too sharp and I need to dull it so that it has a radius of a couple of thousandths. I just do that by hand. The fly cutter is now ready to go. If you're interested in more information on this topic, check out the web page links at the, at the bottom of this page. And thank you for watching. I hope this has been useful for you.